through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. I mean, glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee, O Heavenly King, the comfort, the spirit of truth, who art everywhere present, fill us all things. O treasure of a good and bestower of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls of good one. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord of Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. I mean. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, as you know, today is uh, the feast of our Lord's baptism. And on the traditional Orthodox calendar, it's the eve before the Nativity. Tomorrow, the majority of the Orthodox throughout the world will be celebrating our Lord's Nativity. I find it very beautiful, as I mentioned uh, two weeks ago, uh, that we had this because in the early Christian church, up until either the 3rd or 4th centuries, um, the feasts of our Lord's Nativity and His Theophany, or His Baptism, were one. They were celebrated together. And the church fathers, at their discretion, thought, you know what, these are two very important historical events. Let's focus on them. Because the feasts of the church, the different feast days, the great feasts of our Lord, of the Mother of God, of the saints, of all the history of the church, they are for us to celebrate and to take the meaning from it and to implement in our, in our lives today. And that's why many times in the hymnology of the church, we often use the present tense. You know, and today in the blessing of the waters, uh, five or six times the priest, when he's reading certain prayers, will say, Today, 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 Simeron, Simeron, today, why today? It's not an event that just happened historically at one point in time where Christ was baptized in the Jordan. When anyone, what do we say in, in, when, when one is baptized, one of the hymns that we take from Scripture, all you that have been baptized into Christ have put Christ on. It's a continual event. At Pascha, what do we say? Christ has risen? No. Christ is risen. So what he granted to us on that day of his baptism, he grants every day to anyone who comes to the knowledge of the faith. To show you how much his love is for us, it's not a past event only. It's an event that has happened and will happen and continue to happen until his second coming. We can participate in our Lord's baptism. You know, I was showing my kids a few nights ago. There are some beautiful pictures from Antathos. I'm sorry that we don't have a multimedia. One day I'll be a little better and have some multimedia. Press a button, a slide will pop up. And it shows a man on Antathos that was baptized as an adult. And uh, they showed some of the pictures. And above his head in the picture was a dove. Right? Yeah. People didn't see it. It came out in the picture. It came out in the picture, right? It's similar to our Lord's baptism when the dove appeared, the spirit appeared in the form of a dove. And it's great that we share these, what I call mini miracles. They're still great miracles, but I just call them mini miracles. To show us that what happened back in those days still happens today. When the Lord spoke, our Heavenly Father said, This is my Son, who I am well pleased. It happens to today too. The God doesn't just speak in the past. He speaks to us today. Now, I don't mean hearing things literally. <coughs> well, maybe for holy people. But for us, you start hearing things. Be <coughs> but more in our heart. The subtle, the subtle things in our heart. Where we may hear within ourselves, you know what? When are you going to stop doing that? You know what? It's time to change. Those small little subtleties within us. Yes, sir. Yeah, sorry. Uh, just because you were on that topic, yeah, I yeah. also saw that the waters of the Jordan River flow backwards. Yeah, you know what? That's, I'm glad you mentioned that. You yeah. know? Um, it's beautiful, and, it and I happens, encourage you, yeah. if you ever get a chance um, to have a, a mini pilgrimage, you know, not a huge group, I'd say 10 people or less, and go to the Holy Lands and go to all these places. And as you mentioned correctly, Yanni, on the, the Feast of Our Lord's Theophany, the Patriarch of Jerusalem performs the service where our Lord was baptized, and when he throws the cross into the water, to this day it happens, on every Orthodox Theophany, just as the day, those days, when our Lord was baptized, it says in the hymnology of the church, um, the Jordan retreated. You see the flow of the water prior to the... You go online, you can see this too. Prior to the, to the, to the service, the river is uh, flowing in one direction, the current. And when he throws the cross in, uh, it starts going the other way. <laughs> yeah, that question Yeah, one quick sec. So... It's just to show us. It's not just an event that happened then. Right? It's something for us to participate 
and, to, and, and not just in these many miracles, because Christ says, you know, greater is you know, to, to raise the dead. And he's not talking physically dead, which the saints have done before. It's the spiritually dead. To raise someone who is spiritually dead is one of the greatest miracles that we can do, right? And the first person that we can help raise spiritually dead is ourselves. <laughs> We're always thinking about everybody else who we can raise, but we need to look within ourselves, right? The kingdom of God is within us. And we have to begin with ourselves, correcting ourselves. The Lord says that many times, right, in different ways. You see the sty in your brother's eye, but you don't see the log in your own eye. And as, as my, uh, my mother-in-law says, and I call it in Greek, yaya theology, grandma's theology, we can't even see our own nose. And then we're going to point out the faults of our brothers and sisters, right? So look within ourselves, and that's how we begin the events. So you were going to ask a question earlier. Sorry. Yeah, I just want to ask a question. I was, I was just asking, why can't Toronto can provide something like that? I'm sorry? Here in Toronto, why can't we just throw a cross in, the, in Lake Ontario or the pool? Or... Well, you know what? It's actually it's interesting you should mention that. There are various Orthodox priests that actually do do that. In right? Toronto? Yeah, yeah. There are different priests that do do that. So. Do you think you might do that next year? Send an email to the metropolis. Someone has to jump and in. And ask them. Yeah. yeah. The cross. Especially this year. You know, the waters were a lot uh, warmer, you know, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I know, for example, like in, in big metropolises like New York, for example, other big cities, you know, they, they do. I'm not sure. I'm, I, I'd be lying if I told you the need for certain either way. But why not? Send an email. Yeah, send yeah, a letter I, I, card first, I, believe, I believe at first it must be like a warm client. I saw pictures of Russia, Ukraine, Bulgaria. Well, and it's like, they, they go in the, they cut out, they actually cut out a cross in the middle of a lake where it's frozen rock solid and the ice is like this thick, right? So, no, they still do it. It's the faith, right? So, speaking of the faith, tonight what we're going to discuss very, oh, sorry, please, please. Quick question. So, so today is the 12th day of, after Christmas. Yes. So the baptism. Yes. So, the old calendar. Yeah. They celebrate Christmas Eve and the Epiphany? Cause no, the, they'll, they, so we'll the, the traditional Orthodox calendar tonight is the <coughs> eve of our Lord's Nativity. And then 12 days afterwards will be Theophany for them. Oh, okay. So January 20th. Because right? I was seeing like, the Russians were doing it now. I think there was pictures online. Yeah, it was just pictures. Could be something that... Yeah, yeah, from other, from yeah, other past pictures. events, right? So please go ahead. Are you... Uh, are you saying that tonight is the holy night of, well, of Christ's birth? The majority of the Orthodox use the traditional calendar, which which is um, 13 days different from the secular calendar, right? So on the Orthodox calendar today, the traditional Orthodox calendar, it is the 24th of December, ecclesiastical calendar, which is separated from the secular calendar. Back in the 20s in Greece, it's a long story. I don't want to get into it tonight because I'd be here for like six hours. And okay. got me. No, no. <laughs> but the point Plus is, the yes, the majority, like for example, in Jerusalem today, well, 40 hours now, say seven hours ahead. Plus the video. Probably, probably, they're probably uh, Eating? You know, <laughs> finishing off the service or whatever. But the point is, yes, it is the eve of our Lord's uh, nativity according to the traditional Orthodox calendar. Which is the correct one. Ah, uh, it's which always... Is, which is the correct one? I think that's what I'm driving at. The, the, I, will, I will answer it this way, because I don't want to go into a huge topic. The traditional calendar is the calendar that the most Orthodox use today, which, which today would be the 24th of December. Yes. Yeah. But Easter is always the same. Yeah, the Julian calendar. Yeah, yeah. But one thing I want, to, I, want to, I want to stress before we go into tonight's topic, <clears throat> remember what the Lord said, that the days... Man wasn't made for the days, the days were made for man, right? So what's very important is not what day we celebrate, okay? But what we celebrate. And not more than just celebrate, live, right? Because, you know, the scribes and the Pharisees, they had everything down pat externally. But internally, what did Christ say? Dead man's bones, right? So I, I want to just draw some caution Yes, it's beautiful. My, my own humble opinion, I would love it for the, the, all the Orthodox to be on the traditional Orthodox calendar. That's the proper calendar. That's the calendar that the Fathers had. And there was, wasn't really any good reason to change it. It caused confusion for everyone. It was a horrible thing that happened. I'll openly confess that. But that's happened. It's difficult for us to return to that. Maybe, God willing, one day 
if we if we humble ourselves and and and, and have a little bit of contrition and, and do that but my concern is that we don't go to extremes with things that we focus on the event some people will say well was christ born on december 25th here's my answer i don't care <laughs> that he was born that's what i care about i think that's what we should care about right was he baptized on january the 6th i don't know and i don't care but that he was baptized. That's what I care about. Because, because of his nativity and his baptism, I have salvation. Right? So I know it's a long-winded answer. <laughs> no, 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 no. You just uh, expound. Um, uh, the matter of Christ's baptism, this is as he is a man yes. with John the Baptist. Correct. Correct. And are you saying that this was sequentially or like or historically a, a, a years ahead to the day sort of thing? Well, it's there. There are various opinions on this topic, right? But what I will say is this: in the in the early Christian church, both the Nativity of our Lord and Theophany were celebrated together as one feast, right? So the Christians would be celebrating Christmas, the Nativity of our Lord. And the Theophany at once. I thought, I thought right? And then the church fathers said, you know what? These two events are very important. Let's separate them and focus on one. And then, as the 12 days of Christmas, as we said two weeks ago, that's what the 12 days of Christmas are. There aren't the turtle doves and all the other silliness that you hear in these songs, right? It's from to, to, to our, Lord's, our Lord's baptism, right? I thought Christmas is tomorrow, but yeah, regardless. But what I'm trying to get at is back to your, your, your question there. Is that traditionally um, uh, tonight is the eve of, of our Lord's nativity on the, on the majority of the Orthodox celebrate the traditional calendar. But again, the important part is the event. Oh, I, I find it interesting that you use the word theophany. I, I think, like I was about to say, yep. in simpler or that's a <coughs> dictionary, yep. you can't find it. Find theophany? It. Yeah. Uh, it depends. It depends. A word that you yeah, see the, very often is that... My understanding of the word is yeah. it's a sighting of God, of which yes. there are only four or five yes. in the entire script. Yes. And yes. so this, this, this particular sighting is, uh, how can I put this, it's not in a dream. Correct. And it's not the angels or rather... Uh, yes, the yes. It's the Lord himself. Right? Yes. It's not right. Yes. Not the burning bush. Correct, the, right? correct, correct. It's not the, the fourth, like, or onto the fourth in the fiery furnace. Correct. Uh, so, uh, I would say the, the usage of the word theophany is very powerful. Oh, absolutely. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that, because again, as I was mentioning to my kids a few days ago, is that if we, what we know of our faith has been revealed to us, Whatever, like, I mean, we wouldn't know if it wasn't revealed to us. So, for example, on the Lord's Theophany, right? The Father spoke. They heard. You know, it's funny, the, the kids are the best. I love the kids. They're like, Papa, why didn't the scribes and Pharisees believe? They heard his voice of the Father. I said, yeah, that's scary. Yeah. And then I said, us, forget about the scribes and Pharisees. Why don't we listen? Right? We are baptized. Why don't we listen to the Lord's voice? As we said earlier, right? What does it say in the psalm somewhere? It says, uh, while you hear my voice, do not let your heart become hardened. And that's what's happened. It's become the hardening of our hearts, right? So that's why we have these feasts. So the, the, the water, the blessed water the, the, of the Jordans to soften our hearts, <laughs> so to speak. Hopefully we'll, we'll chew on that for a while. Zissi, you had a point you want to mention? Or? Um, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about what you said. I was reading today when it says about his voice. And God the Father spoke to me in heaven. Right? And I was thinking in the Old Testament in Genesis, where he's, where he's, he spoke again. He says, let there be light. And I was thinking, because I know the question came up in other people in discussions. What was his voice like? So, was it a yell? And I know the Father said we shouldn't try to figure out how. Well, in certain cases, it does actually say that it was like thunder. So, like, was that, what was that? Right? 
And I think if we, if we sometimes just take a step back and read the scriptural account, you know, in prayer, and go to the Holy Fathers who have, you had mentioned earlier, that they, they are the ones who saw God, who were in union, commune with God, right? And let's ask them, right? I'll put it to you metaphorically. Say you're, there's a mountain, and the, and the Lord's at the very top of that mountain, and we are journeying up that mountain. The Holy Fathers are right around him, right? And down on that mountain are the different fathers of the church to those uh, of this day. And we're at the very bottom climbing up that mountain. We're speaking to God. He speaks to us. We can't hear him because how far we are away from him. So what do we do? We ask those who are on the mountain at a higher level. What do you say? <laughs> right? That's our relationship with the Holy Fathers. We go back and ask them. Right? And that's why, as I mentioned before a million times, probably more than a million times, that in order to lead a bona fide spiritual life, you need to have a spiritual father. It's the one thing I, I, I beg you with all of my soul, that you pray, if you don't have a spiritual father, um, that you pray with all of your heart, day and night, for God to send you a God-bearing spiritual father that will guide you on the proper path. Because that's one thing today, whether it be within the church or even outside of the church, um, I don't like using the word success, because they can have different connotations, but I'll use it with extreme caution. In order for us to have success in the spiritual life, we need to find someone who he himself has conquered himself. Right? When you want to learn a trade or anything you, you study, you study from a master, right? You study from somebody who hopefully knows better than you, otherwise why are you going to that person, right? And more so, what is more important is for your soul. And that's why Christ gave us the church. He gave us those doctors, right? It's a very special gift that God grants to certain people uh, to be a spiritual father. That's not just anybody, right? St. Paul himself says that though you have many uh, teachers in Christ, you don't have many fathers, for I begot you in the Gospels. You know, there are specific people God has given that gift to. So pray with all of your heart, Lord, send me. Send me someone from you to help me you know, guide, my, guide my, my spiritual life, my life, to you. Most important thing. Because you can read all the books, you can go online, listen to homilies, you can go pilgrimage. You, all that's very good, don't get me wrong. But if you don't have that, then it's, it's very dangerous. right? It's like walking on a cliff where you could just fall over. Because we don't have the discretion, we don't have knowledge of ourself, we don't have knowledge of the spiritual life, the pitfalls, all those things. And as I said to my kids last night, we don't only have one life. You don't get a second chance, right? Well, some people do. <laughs> but in general, you don't get a second chance. So let's make good on it. Let's make good on the time that God has given us. You know, on, on various feast days, you know, if, if, if someone today is by the name of, uh, you know, Theofani or Foti or Fotini or the different, kind of, uh, different, uh, different uh, versions of uh, male or female names back to the Theophany of our Lord, you know, we say to them in Greek, uh, many years. And let me explain to you what this many years means. It doesn't mean many years so we can go eat and party. Many years may God give us of repentance. That's what we need. We need the time. Give, Lord, give me time to repent. And actually there's a saint of the church, Saint Arsenius of Cappadocia, who was the spiritual father of St. Paisios, uh, who was recently canonized by the church, glorified by the church, the proper terminology. His prayer was this, not, Lord, give me time to repent. Lord, give me time that I may learn how to make a beginning on my repentance. Like, look how deep. So if the saints... <laughs> yes, <I'm very laughs> <very well out. laughs> if the saints speak that way, how more so should we? So as the uh, things in Scripture in the Old Testament, it says, ask your Father, and He will show you. So ask your spiritual Father, ask the church, and you will not fall astray. You will be on the right path. So if it's okay, if we go quickly to these things, okay. one quick point, okay, sure. Uh, I was going to ask for <laughs> spiritual Father, because most people, some people may not Sure, know. sure. What is that? A spiritual Father, first of all, is someone who is living the orthodox life according to the tradition of the church 
and he himself has conquered himself. In most cases, the majority of its cases, <coughs> they, the person is a priest. Um, certain exceptions, there may be monks that aren't priests, but in general today, uh, they, they are priests and even priest monks to be more and more specific. Um, there is an ancient, uh, an ancient or old church document from the Patriarchate of Constantinople uh, prior to the Turkish uh, occupation. So we're talking about prior to 1453. Um, and it basically says, I, Bishop, so-and-so of this diocese, do hereby give my blessing to this blank higher monk, priest monk. It was, it was only accomplished people that were given the blessing from the church, from the bishop in particular, to be a confessor, to be a spiritual father. Right? Because traditionally in the church, the bishop was the holiest person the church had. Right? So for lack of an expression, you, you know, when you're driving your car, your headlights, they're going to be the best ones you have, right? You're not going to... You're not going to put the, just anything you know, from the dollar store, you know. You're not going to use the dollar store place to put the front of your car, unless you're crazy, right? You're going to find the best lights that you have to put them in the front because you've got a path to go on. In the church, the same thing too, right? But what happened, we're off topic, but it's okay. What happened was, um, because of the Turkish occupation uh, and historical circumstances there afterwards, um, there were a lot of monasteries, right, over a period of time. The monasteries were either shut down or less uh, monks were going, so less spiritual fathers. So the bishop, the patriarch of Constantinople at the time, gave a general blessing to everyone that was a priest to to confess, to give the blessing to confess people. But uh, I think we're in the times now, God willing, with the, here in North America, with the reestablishment of monasteries, slowly but surely, by the grace of God, we are having slowly, slowly people who are called by God or becoming priests and through, you know, through spiritual direction, through the grace of God, are becoming confessors and guiding people, right? Because, again, it's very, very important that you find someone who he himself has conquered himself, right? So, so it's basically you're saying an experienced person yeah. that has been ordained by the church to yeah. their confessions. Correct, correct, yeah. And what I will add to that is, again, to prayer, is Christ himself says in the scriptures, you shall know them by their fruit. And so I encourage you in your prayer, and then go on pilgrimage. Go to different holy places and pray with all of your heart. It's the most important decision, the most important decision you will make in your life. More important of where you're going to go to school, what job you're going to do, or, you know, which hockey team, which hockey team uh, you're going to pick, go or, um, you know, who you're going to marry, or what you're going to eat. The most important decision you'll make in your life is who's going to be your spiritual father because that's who you can open up your soul to. And you're not, and I'm, I draw caution to you, do not open your soul just to anyone. You know, sometimes the fathers say, you know, we're, we're looking for a captain to guide our ship. And sometimes we find a sailor <laughs> instead of a captain. And you know, sailors sometimes, rough men, they have a few too many. <laughs> and you're going to go to the drunkard to give you guidance. You want to find a captain. That's been through, you know, the difficult shipwrecks and knows those deep waters and knows where the pitfalls are. Right? I hope that helps. Forgive me. And uh, we'll go to what? Oh, sorry, please, please go is ahead. This, is this in the same vein uh, with respect to the, to the lineage, like the laying on of hands? Yes, yes, the laying on of hands. You know, it's, it's very same. important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, because. You know, Saint, you know, St. Paul tell Timothy, you know, be careful who you, who you lay your hands on, right? Who you ordain. The person must be ordained by Christ to be a bona fide priest. And forgive me for what I'm going to say. I'm, I'm part Spartan. It's, I've been controlling it lately, but it comes out. You know, there are a lot of charlatans out there. No. A lot. So what does that mean, children? <laughs> um... <laughs> Fakes. Ah. Right? Fake priests or? Fake everything. Sure. Yeah, fake directors, fake this, fake that. And because, you know, people, you know, everyone is spiritual because everyone is born from Christ. People have a natural calling, a linkage, desire 
to be in union communion with God, but sometimes people do it the wrong way. Like the Tower of Babel, right? They want to go to God, but that's not the way you're going to do it. Right? And that's why it's called the Orthodox Church. It's the proper way. Well, why don't we just turn this matter of captaincy right over to our Lord? Yes. Personally. Like yeah. each, each to one. Well, th that, of course, is our goal. But here's the problem, as I said earlier. And this links back to the theophany. You know, we don't have the discernment, right? What does it say in the scriptures? The devil can come in the form of angel of light. I'll say even bluntly, Antichrist, when he comes, right? The whole world's going to follow him. Because they're going to think, no, this is the one. This is the Messiah, right? And will deceive many. And the scripture, the scripture, what the scriptures say, even the elect will be deceived. Hard to believe it. So the point is, in order for us to foster that relationship with Christ, as we said earlier, you need to have someone to show you. Because there's deception. Because we have a lot of vices or passions, it's called in Orthodox theology, right? All linked to our ego. And until that ego is cured, how can we have that relationship with Christ? We can fall into deception. That's, that's the concern, right? So yes, absolutely, in our prayers, you know, a good spiritual father will give you a prayer rule, right? To begin. And you go to him on a regular basis, and there's a, like a checking in, you know, how things are going in your spiritual life, and you show, you share those things. Oh, you know, I'm lazy, or this is what's happening, or I'm seeing this, or I'm experiencing this, and you want to make sure that it's bona fide, because deception can be there, right? So, because the devil attacks. What is, I think somewhere in the scripture says that Christ says that, you know, those who you know, want to live a spiritual life, you got to prepare yourself for temptations. Right? If, if, the, if the devil tempted our Lord, is that going to tempt us? Unless we have guidance, how we, we can easily fall. I'm not saying this that you have fear or like a complex, but a healthy fear. Right? You tell your kids, that neighborhood, <laughs> it's not a good neighborhood. Don't go there. You don't tell the kid you can't go to the park. Just go in our neighborhood where I have 500 cameras. <laughs> right? That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Because what happens is, and I say this to my kids sort of convince them. I said, when you listen to your parents, you're mimicking Christ. Because Christ was obedient to his Father, right? So same thing applies in the spiritual life. When we're obedient to the church, to our spiritual Father, we become like Christ. Tough to swallow sometimes because our ego doesn't like that, right? We, we find ourselves, when we lure, lose ourselves, Christ says, right? And we lose ourselves when we think that we found ourselves. So I'll, I'll let you chew on that, as they say, <laughs> for a while. No, 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 but I, I, I really appreciate the, the, the questions and the comments. One of my uh, pet peeves, it's a good one, is uh, oftentimes the hymnology of the church and the services we don't understand. Right? I'm not a proponent that we change languages, by the way. You know, whatever ethnic background you are, you keep that. That's your inheritance. Don't throw that away. Somebody died to give that to you. Right? But as we are here in North America, and specifically here in Canada, you know, in order to, you know, to spread a faith, you have to share it. How do you share it? You have to share it in the language of the people. Right? So, glory to God. You know, when I remember when I first came to this bookstore almost 20 years ago, you know, a lot of the books that we had in English weren't very good. And now there's no excuse. Like every, every time I see new books come out, I'm like, wow, it was like amazing. So that Christ, as he said, everyone will be without any excuse. So I, I hope one day our church continues to work on translations. There are many. The book that I use, is a, it's actually an ecclesiastical book called The, the Great Oroloyo. It's a nice pocket version, right? And in it, it has various hymns that are used on each day of the, of the church, which is every day. So, there is a hymn uh, today for our Lord's baptism, and I want to start with that and then go to a brief reading and open up some more discussion. When I was baptized in the Jordan, O Lord, the worship of the Trinity was made manifest. For the voice of the Father bear witness to Thee, 
calling thee his beloved son. And the spirit in the form of a dove confirmed the certainty of the word. O Christ our God, who hast appeared and has enlightened the world, glory be to thee. This is huge. Right? Because today, many people deny that there is a Holy Trinity. Where does it say in the Bible, Trinity? We see it, as you mentioned correctly today, in the Theophany. It was revealed to us. It was shown. Right? It says right here, in the baptism of the Lord. The Trinity was made manifest. The voice of the Father, Christ the Son, the Dove, right? the Holy Spirit, right there, boom. Calling thee his beloved Son in the Spirit in the form of a Dove confirmed the certainty of the Word. So going back to earlier, your point about you know, our relationship with Christ, we need the certainty. I need to make sure that my relationship with Christ is a real one and that I'm not deceived or I'm not following a charlatan. And that's again why Christ gave us the church. We had a series of homilies a long time ago and I'm getting tempted in a good way to start them again. Not what is the church, who is the church? <coughs> the church is Christ. Who is the head of the church? Pope of Rome? <laughs> Christ is the head of the church. Imagine a body without a head. Christ is the church. And his representatives, as we say, are the bishops who have the laying out of hands from the apostles and the presbyters, the priests, and the deacons. That's the holy order that God established, that Christ himself established, that he promised, eh? The gates of Hades shall not prevail against the church. And that's why, again, bona fide, real, true Christian life can only be within the Orthodox Church. It may sound difficult to certain people, but research it yourself. Prior to the Orthodox Church, there was no other church. So I, I, I say this, especially for our viewers who may watch this later on, in prayer and in research, because the greatest thing is for, the, for those who are outside of the church to come back. You know, I mentioned my kids last night, our neighbors, you know, wonderful people. Not orthodox, and I would say yet. <laughs> everyone's. I want to say in my heart. Everyone's not orthodox yet, because that's my brother. Your next door neighbor is your brother. And until we understand that, nothing will change. You know, speaking about the elders of the church, there was a saint of the church who came out of his hut one day, and he was bawling. So his his disciples came to him and said, "Elder, what is it?" Oh, he goes, I just had a thought that somebody somewhere is suffering. He was crying for somebody he didn't even know. Crying for his long lost brother. That is a Christian life. Because Christ says, if you love God, those who say who love God, who you have not seen, but you don't love your brother that you have seen, that's a joke if not worse. So, not only do they deny the existence of the Trinity, they deny the divinity of Christ, which is a great blasphemy, to deny the divinity of Christ, and others even deny that He even existed. That it's all fake. Man-made. And that's why the historicity of Christ is very important. A histor he's a historical person. That's why we say in the creed, you know, that he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Historical. Point. Boom. He was baptized in the river Jordan. Boom. There were witnesses. The apostles themselves. They saw him. They lived with him. Thomas touched him, eh? Think about it. Why would these 12 crazy Jews follow this other crazy Jew and do what they did? You got the Romans on the one side and the scribes and the Pharisees on the other. Why would they do that? What was their motive? Who was paying them off? Because every 
you know, all these uh, de deceivers today, or doubters, or you say all your Christian, you know, people just pay people off, you do this, you do that. Okay, go back to the very beginning then. Forget about now. Go back to the very beginning. What was their motive? They pursued the truth. Exactly. They pursued the truth at all costs, including what? Their lives. And then read the early Christian martyrs. Even up to this day. You know, follow Allah and we won't chop your head off. How many martyrs today? Even to this day, eh? Because I'm telling you right now, that they put that sword to your throat. If you don't believe in Christ, and when I say believe, I don't mean here. But here, you're going to say, Allahu Akbar. You're going to say it. And that's why it's important that we are ingrained organically with Christ every single day. And that's why we have these feasts, to help us focus. Look at the humility of Christ, eh? St. John the Baptist, he didn't know exactly what was going on. And all of a sudden, oh, oh i got to be baptized by you. No, no, the Lord says, we must fulfill all righteousness. Look at the humility. Did Christ need to be baptized? Think about it. That's why it says he came straight out from the water. Read the scriptural account. He had no sin. The humility, eh? And that's the first mystery of the church, the sacrament that's used in English. Into the church. Baptism. What do we say in the creed? I confess one baptism. Outside of the church, there is no baptism. Forget about this stuff all if they're baptized in the name of the Trinity. Outside of the church, there's no grace. Think about this. Prior to our Lord's baptism, what does it say? John was baptizing people, right? Unto repentance. When Christ came, he subsided, he left. What happened to all the disciples of John? They were baptized. They were baptized. <clears throat> eh? What does that show us? The baptism of John wasn't good enough. They had to be baptized by the apostles. Eh? So how dare anyone suggest that we can take baptism from heretics? Please. It's a joke, if not a blasphemy. In the church, by an ordained Orthodox priest, fully immersed, not this sprinkling of water, or, you know, in a little tub, and, oh, we don't have water. Listen, we got lots of water. And you said today, get the lake over there. Either we do it all the way, or we don't do it at all. As my fifth grade school teacher taught me, God bless him, many good things. No one gets credit for painting a house halfway. Right? Imagine you pay somebody to paint a house, pay half of it. Where's over there? 500 bucks. Well, give me 250. I said 500 for the whole house. So until you paint the whole house, I'm not paying you. It's the most beautiful thing, eh? To see a full baptism from a baby to an adult. It's the most glorious thing to see. And I, and I hope one day, if you haven't already experienced that, most of us probably have seen an infant baptism, which is glorious and beautiful, but especially of an adult. A friend of mine who was baptized in Naval said, Nico, when I was baptized, when I was in the water, I saw my whole life flash forward me like a, like a film. You know the old film in a camera? It goes... <sighs> and Bob, I felt Bob completely... Marley said the same thing. Pardon me? Bob Marley said the same thing. Yeah, pure. Well, of course. Again, in the scriptures, all ye that have been baptized into Christ have put Christ on. Think about it. When you get dressed, do you just wear shoes? You know, all of your clothing. Why three times? Yeah? It's not just once in the baptism. Why three times? Anyone? Trinity? Three days. The Lord was in the belly of the whale. His resurrection. Yeah? When you bury someone, do you just bury them up to their head? No. All the way in. Six feet, don't we say? Six feet. It's important. It's a special mystery of the church, one's baptism. 
It's a spiritual armor. When you go to war, you get full armor, right? You're not just going to wear just a helmet. <laughs> You'd be crazy. And the spiritual life, the same thing too. And what else do we get afterwards? Right after when a person is baptized, what's the first thing that the person... Chrismation? The seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit? Right? In the early Christian church, the apostles were doing that with their hands, because they had the grace of the bishop with the grace of the Holy Spirit. And then today, because the church has grown, the patriarchy has a blessing of a special chrism. It's like, I don't know how many different, hundreds of different things that go into that. It's blessed in the patriarchy, given to all the churches. It's a seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then right after that, what do we receive? Holy Communion. Holy Communion. And as the French say, fait accompli. <coughs> <coughs> Hence why the church celebrated the nativity and theophany together. Because baptism and Holy Communion are one. Only those who are baptized can receive Holy Communion. Right? And I'll add, confessed. And I'll add, repented <laughs> and confessed. Right? Because in our days, and especially the days of our children, they're going to have to confess the Trinity, and the divinity of Christ, and the historicity of Christ, that Christ actually existed. Okay, I'll keep it for another maybe 10-15 minutes. Um, someone was asking me about, uh, earlier today upstairs, before we started the homily, about what we read on the internet. Should we trust it? You know, this, I, they said that there were some writings of a certain person. I don't know if the name doesn't really matter, someone's name. And they, they twisted his words. They you know, misquoted him and reproduced stuff on the internet. And the internet is a good tool. Don't get me wrong. But as I was once told almost 20 years ago by a, an Athenite monk on Mount Athos, he said, uh, the internet uh, is like a snake. It walks without feet. So our reference shouldn't be the internet. Right? Our reference, if we're going to reference, we should be referencing from books. And in, in particular, this book here I love very much by Metropolitan Euorthos and Nachbachtos of Greece, who is still alive, who is a very holy bishop of the church. And uh, it's the Feast of the Lord. So I encourage you, uh, we have it right above your head. You want to just pass it around? Uh, no. Further up? This way? Uh, yeah, please, thank you. It's closed. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. If, if you know what, if it's closed, just, just pass one. It's okay, it's okay. If you want, open one of them because it should be open so you can take a look what's inside. Just open it up here. We should do like Byzantine musical chairs with a book, right? So it plays the music when it goes around, you have to keep the book. <laughs> you know, because we don't spend the time on the eve of a feast, or even the day of a feast, or even the weekend before, to go and read what the tradition of the church is about the feast, so that we go prepare to the church. You know, oftentimes we go to church late, we just plop ourselves up there, you know. We need to prepare. When you go somewhere, when you go to a party, you go to an event, don't you prepare? Of course. When we go to church, we should prepare ourselves. So there's a section from here, uh, from Metropolitan Eurotheos Navnathbachtos of Greece, that I want to uh, share with you tonight, very briefly. The event of Christ's baptism by John the Forerunner in the River Jordan is called Theophany and Epiphany. In the early church, the Feast of Nativity and Theophany were celebrated together on the same day, January the 6th. In the 4th century, the feasts were separated and Christmas was transferred to December 25th, the day on which the Gentiles celebrated the Sun God and the Christians the Son of Righteousness. Likewise, it is called the Feast of Lights, as St. Gregory the Theologian characterizes it, because of the baptism, illumination of the catechumens, and because of the lighting of fire. So going back to your point, as they seem from the very beginning, let there be light. The first light that God gave was spiritual light. So in baptism, that's what one receives, is the spiritual light. Catechumen. Sounds like a very cool word, catechumen. What does it mean? The Greek word katecho, which means I acknowledge, I understand. Traditionally in the church, you know, a person had to be a catechumen for three years prior to the being baptism. And usually they were baptized on Holy Saturday. 
right, prior to Pascha, for them to receive. So, catechumens are ones who do not have the light. They are not baptized yet. They're, pre they're preparing. And that's why when you take the responsibility, it is a responsibility to become a godparent, because the baby can't speak for himself or herself. The godparent is responsible with the parents to help raise them in the <coughs> Christian faith. Okay? Simon, you had a... I was just going to say, uh, just make two points. The one I was reading, what, so the Holy Fathers were actually saying that, the like Father Seer and Rose actually points it out in his book, Genesis Creation, um, that the light that God created was actually before the actual sun was created. Yes. Yes. So when he said, let there be light, four days after, then the sun was created. Yes, yes. And, and that's what I'm saying, it's the spiritual light. And that's why it's important, I say it again and again, as we say in Greek, eti ke eti, again and again, we must read the Holy Fathers. If we don't love the Holy Fathers, and then the other Spartan punch is going to come out. It's going to be a right hook. We don't love Christ. How, why do I say that? Because Christ said to his apostles, which also leads to, his, to their successors, whoever listens to you, listens to me, he says. Right? The Holy Fathers were sent by whom? By Christ. So whoever does not acknowledge the Holy Fathers denies Christ. Tough words, eh? I hope it hurts. Because we've got to reorient ourselves. The Greek word, Sigedrosu. To understand our relationship with Christ is directly connected with our relationship with the Holy Fathers. Christ, he didn't just take off. Okay, bye. Figure it out. Lo, I'm with you to the end of the age. And he also gave us the Holy Fathers who are connected with him. So, rightfully said, Zissimo, read the Holy Fathers, especially we spoke with the Old Testament, right? The spiritual light. And how everything is connected, because God willing, you know, before we know, we're going to be celebrating Pascha if we live past the day. The priest, all the, all the lights in the church are completely darkened. And he comes out <coughs> from the holy altar. What does he say? Vef de lava de fos. Come receive the light. What light? The light, the spiritual light that never sets. Tu an espero fotos. That's also a miracle in Jerusalem. Exactly. So the whole point is, this is why we have borders within the church. Right? Just like with your kids. There's ground rules. Right? Rules of engagement, for lack of a better expression. Enter into the church first as a catechumen. Getting proper guidance. Leading a proper life. Preparing for baptism. Receiving Holy Communion on a regular basis. Working on your passions. The vices that we say in English. It's a life. The early Christians, what they were called? The followers of the way. The orthodox way. The word theophany comes from the apostolic passage. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. From 1 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 16. It relates mostly to Christ's nativity. The word epiphany comes from the apostolic passage. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. From Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. And as my Southern Baptist friends like to say, it's all in the Bible. Read it. 
according to the Holy Fathers, not according to this. Because this is off. Sometimes big time. And this, also off big time. When we go back to our Holy Fathers, we humble ourselves. And that's when miracles happen. Miracles happen when we humble ourselves. Because then we're like Christ. Learn from me for I'm meek and humble and gentle in heart. That's when the miracles happen. You want to see miracles happen? Humble yourself. It's hard, eh? Because it's, as I joke with my friends, let go of my ego, <laughs> let go of my ego. In any case, oh, sorry, um, so uh, we said Titus chapter 2, verse 11. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men and is related mostly to Christ's baptism, for it was then that people recognized the grace of the divinity. Everything we know in our faith is because it was revealed. That's why it's important to go to church early, not just for the divine liturgy. During the Orthos and Matin service, you know, we hear certain hymns. In Greek, the Theos Kyrios. God is the Lord and has revealed himself unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. It's been revealed. The Orthodox faith is one of revelation. We don't have a religion. Religion, by definition, is man-made. Every religion is man-made. So they ask what your religion say, I don't have one. What, you're an atheist? No, I'm orthodox. We have revelation. And you mentioned earlier, Blessed Father Sephirim Rose, who I personally believe is a saint. It's the revelation to the heart of man. Is this what told the other people? Pardon me? Instead of, if instead of saying, what's your religion, we say, that's, we don't have a religion, we say we have a religion. For me, it's, as we say in Greek, between seriousness and joke. Say it with certain people to make them, what, what, what do you mean by that? Because some people need to be woken up. Other people, it doesn't matter what you're going to say, they're still going to be sleeping. So leave, let them sleep in peace. <laughs> but where, you know, like a good cook knows when to put the picante in, when he's, he's cooking or she's cooking. Father yeah. Robotinus has an interesting quote about religion. Yeah. He goes, religion is a neurobiological sickness, a short circuit in the brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say that again. Father John Romanidis, the priest who passed away in the early 80s, he was interpreting No, 2000, he's like, Says, religion is a neurobiological sickness and a short circuit in the brain. <laughs> <laughs> because if Christ had not come, right? If we were prior to Christ, then it makes sense because, you know, man didn't have the opportunity, right? Outside of the Jews, man didn't have the opportunity. After Christ, no excuse, especially now, zero, especially excuse, no excuses. To have man-made religions. Because we have the truth. Christ. In any case... But there's... Uh, sorry? Sorry. There, yeah, there, no, there, no. There, there's also other people who try to twist things around. For example, the Jews uh, say that uh, Jesus came from the Virgin Mother, not from David, per se. You got, you got those people. And you, what, got, you, got, the, and you got Islam who says that, uh, well, he's no, he's no God. <laughs> He may he came from a virgin birth. They, they they admit that, but he's no god. Yeah, ask them to find you one prophet that came from a virgin birth. It's ridiculous. Well, it's, 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 they also, they it, also, when we when we hear these things, we should be able to dissect them so quickly for their stupidity. If you if yeah, one if a person declares one is a prophet and the other is a prophet, okay, you see the life of the one prophet. And look at the life of the other prophet. Which life is holier? Which life is higher? So we see the real prophet and we see the false prophet. And he's more than the prophet. He's our Lord. In any case, it is a fact that on the day of Christ's baptism, with the manifestation of the Holy Trinity, and the confession of the worthy forerunner, we have the official confession that the Son and Word of God is the one of the Trinity, who became man to save the human race from sin, the devil, and death. So this is the revelation. Especially St. John the Baptist, right? Was prophesied. Right? St. John the Baptist, anyone that says that, you know, they believe in the Old Testament, well, he's the last prophet of the Old Testament and the first prophet of the New Testament. 
What did St. John the Baptist say about Christ? Did he say he was just a prophet, just a good guy? <laughs> no. Behold the Lamb of God, like who taketh God. away the sins of the world. John was right? also, John was recognized by the Jews? Of course. Like, I guess they recognized as in the... Of course, but they were afraid under, of him, under, right? From, from, from the Old Testament. They were afraid of him. They were afraid of John? Oh, yes. What did, what did John do to... <laughs> his life, his life. We celebrate him tomorrow, the feast of St. John the Baptist. I wish we could talk about him tonight too. Yeah. Forgive me, St. John, for not having the, the strength and the time to do that. Next Wednesday. God willing. We'll just put it on free time on a video so we we'll probably look at it. You know what? If you go back and look at our old homilies online, I bet you there's one on St. John the Baptist. Oh. There should be. If not, send us a quick email and God willing, we'll have one. The person who played a major role in Christ's baptism <coughs> is the worthy forerunner, the Baptist John. He is a great prophet, a great character placed between the Old and New Testaments. He is the last, as we said earlier, of the prophets of the Old and the first of the prophets of the New Testament. The way in which he was conceived was miraculous, so we're going to go into it today. Through God's intervention, through the seed of his father, Zacharias, and not from the Holy Spirit. His birth is connected with a miraculous event. His, from the age of three years, sojourn in the desert, indicates his angelic way of life. So those who say, you know, where does our monastic you know, tradition come from? Well, part of it right there is St. John the Baptist. And you'll notice in the icons of St. John the Baptist, he has wings. He doesn't really have wings, but his angelic way of life. His preaching of repentance was to prepare people for the receiving of the Messiah. His humility was awe-inspiring, awe but also his approach to perfection shows that he attained a great height of grace. The worthy forerunner was related to Christ, as his mother, the Panagia, was related to Elizabeth, the mother of, of the forerunner. At the time when the worthy forerunner was an embryo of six months in his mother's womb, the Annunciation came to, to Theotokos, right? So that we understand that John the Baptist was six months older than Christ. So that's that scriptural reading, right? And we find out, you know, Elizabeth is with child. In the Panayia, we celebrate this on the, the Annunciation, right? 25th of March. Beautiful historical event connected with St. John the Baptist. John the Forerunner received the Holy Spirit which showed him to be a prophet while he was six months embryo in his mother's womb. For when the Panagia, who had just conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, greeted his mother Elizabeth, then the babe leapt in her womb, in Luke 1, 4, 41. And in the tradition of the church, according to the Holy Fathers, when St. John the Baptist leapt in his mother's womb, the word that's used in Greek is skeptise, which actually means he worshipped from his mother's womb, Christ, who was in the womb of the Most Holy Theotokos. Wow is right. <laughs> I'm trying to understand that. Can you repeat that? Yeah. So, when they greeted, when Panagia and Elizabeth greeted, John the Baptist was six months in his mother's womb. Okay. And it says in Scripture in Luke, the babe leapt. And he jumped. And it wasn't just, you know, oh, the baby just kicked, which many idiots will say. St. John the Baptist was holy from his mother's womb, recognized in the Panagia that Christ was there, and he worshipped Christ. And that's why in the church we baptize children. We don't wait. Oh, let them figure it out when they get older. And Christ said, bring the children to me. That's right. Suffer the little ones to me not, for the excitement of the kingdom of heaven. The holiness of St. John the Baptist, eh? And his mother, of course, right? That's, that's a calling to us as parents to become holy. And actually all of us, it's a commandment from Christ, be ye holy. Thus he became a prophet and passed the prophetic gift to his mother. For in this way she too recognized the mother of the Lord. Because what did Elizabeth say? Why has the mother of my Lord come to me? The mother of my Lord! That's what Elizabeth said. In the Bible, 
to all my Protestant friends who deny calling the mother of God Panagia, even calling her the mother of God. Even calling her She's not office. just the mother of Christ. She's the mother of God. She gave birth to God. Who is God? Jesus is Lord, right? Theotokos, the birth giver of God, if you want to use that term more specifically. That's the honor. Sir, can you explain who, who or what the Theotokos is? Birth giver of God. So it's like Panagia's last name? No, no, no. <laughs> Another title. Epithet. I was mistaken. I was making that title. I was mistaken that word for a village in Greece. Yeah, they're also oh, named for those villages as well. That's the Logos. Dedicated, Logos. dedicated to the Panagia. Not the Logos, not the Logos. And that's what. And what did what did Mary, as they say, Mary, just some girl. What did the Panagia respond to this? From henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. So I said earlier about the Holy Fathers, now I will, I will add, anyone, anyone who says they are a Christian and does not properly honor, not worship, worship is only for God, does not properly honor the Mother of God is not a Christian. Tough words, I know. Read the scriptures. Read the Holy Fathers. Pray to God. If this idiot who's speaking to you is speaking the truth. Many characterizations have been given to John the Forerunner. The word John means gift of God. The Forerunner is the one who goes ahead on the way. That is to say the precursor of the Messiah. He is called the Baptist because he baptized Christ. One of my friends calls him the Baptizer. He's not a Baptist. He's the baptizer. <laughs> In one of the hymnology of the church, it's called the canon, but the hymnology of the church of the Theophany, a saint of the church, St. Cosmas the poet, who was a bishop of an area called Mayuma in the ancient times, <clears throat> characterizes him with three expressions. Listen to these, eh? The voice of the word, the candlestick of the light, the forerunner of the sun. That's why, as you notice in the church, the, the iconostasion, the, the part that separates the altar from where we are as the, as the laity, right beside Christ, which icon do we have? St. John the Baptist. I'm going to stop there. There's more, but we could be here until the Theophany and the old calendar, the proper calendar. <laughs> Any questions or comments? We'll give it another maybe say five minutes. Okay, so um, well basically basically we're confusion with the new calendar, old calendar. Well, new old calendar, January seventh. What about New Year's? Let me put it to you this way. There are many things that we should fear on judgment day, what we're gonna say to Christ, but it's not gonna be with calendar. He's not gonna say, you know, which calendar you shall look Yeah, but earlier earlier we said that uh, let's just say um, the body on all calendars, January 20th. I'll put it to you this way, the way we should look at this. This is my humble opinion. Yes, the traditional calendar is the proper calendar. Yes, we should return to it. But we're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Meaning, we need to make the proper steps for that correction to take place. We don't, we don't know our faith. We don't live our faith. We don't practice our faith. We don't receive Holy Communion on a regular basis. We don't go for confession on a regular basis. And we're concerned about these things. Small petty. Exactly. Right? We want to know about, you know, all these different conspiracy theories, about Masons, about all these. And they're all important. Don't get me wrong. But I yell at my mother. I treat my neighbor like crap. I cut off the guy in the street. I give him the finger. Whatever you want to call it, okay? First things first, let's fix ourselves, our, ourselves first. And then let the grace of God come upon us and let us do whatever he calls us to do. I hope that helps.
Because sometimes the devil, he'll, he'll, he'll put other things for us to focus on. Right? Distractions. Let's focus on ourselves. Let's focus on our spiritual life. Let's focus on correcting ourselves. That's a lifelong task. Eh? Isn't that enough? Right? Just that. And then if God calls us to those things, that's a different story. Right? What does the scripture say? Not all are prophets, not all are teachers, not all are this. Everyone has a specific calling in life. And it's for us, through prayer and guidance of the spiritual father, to find out what is our calling. Right? That's where we use our free will. That's what we're giving our free will for. Right? That's a, as, as parents, as I remind my wife, uh, with our children, is to help them discern what their calling is. Not for us to tell them what they have to become. That's ridiculous. I joke around my father. Blessed man, he's, he's a retired plumber. And when he was young, my grandfather, God rest his soul, Caralopos, he wanted my father to wear, you know, the Navy, they're all in the Navy, my father's family. And he wanted to wear a suit, you know, look nice, and have an office job, you know, and whatever. My father wanted to be a plumber. <laughs> so he had his little plumbing shop in Athens and <coughs> went off to serve in the Navy. When he came back, my grandfather had sold his plumbing shop. My father was very distraught. So when he came to Canada, like a long story short, he got a master's in plumbing and became a plumber. So I said to my father, so Papu wanted you to become an officer in the Navy, but you became a plumber. So I can become whatever I want then, right? <laughs> we all need to find what God wants us to become. Because I'll tell you, whatever God wants for us, it's always better what we want. And I'll put it to you this way. Even God doesn't really care what we do. As long as we don't sin and we lead a blessed life and follow His Son... And the rest is just details. Whether you get married, whether you get buried, it doesn't matter. As long as we struggle to live a life that's pleasing to Him, the rest is just details. We focus, over-focus sometimes. Whether I get married or not, there was a man at one time who went to St. Paisios, uh, a Mount Athos, and he was crying. He goes, you know, Father, I'm not married. I get it. He goes, look at me, I'm 74 and I'm not married. <laughs> We lose focus. All these things are important. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to belittle anyone who wants to get married. Talk to me very carefully. I'll tell you why you shouldn't. I'm just joking. <laughs> you know, every married man will tell you that. I'm just joking. We focus on these other things, but we don't think put things in order. What does Christ himself say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added. When we seek Christ, think about it. If we all, literally, not just mentally or emotionally, but literally had Christ living within us, as St. Paul says, eh? What would you want? What can you add to Christ? Please tell me. Nothing. Exactly. But what do we do? We add our wife, we add our Stanley Cups, we add this, we add that. We don't have Christ. Right? We need to put Christ first. And then all those little details will be solved. The calendar issue and all this other... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> They'll be solved. Does that help? Love so, Christ. Somewhat. Love Christ. So what, what, what... Which goes first, Christmas or New Year's? <laughs> <laughs> Every day is Christmas. Every day is New Year's. Every day is Theophany. Every day is Pascha. Doesn't really matter. Every day is dedicated to Christ. What do we say in some of the hymns of the church? Not every day. In Greek, we say a Pascha pnoi. Let every breath praise the Lord. Every breath. So let's focus on that. And everything else, it'll just automatically it'll, it'll fix itself. You'll be like, oh my gosh. You know, it was all right in front of me. Things are simple, much more simple than we make them. Please. Nick, good to see you. Likewise. I <coughs> just wanted to touch on the topic of marriage. Sure. It's uh, oftentimes presented as a inferior thing, or not as a not as good as a celibate life, but um, or as a bad thing. But it's not a bad. It's thing. not a bad thing at all. You know, Saint Paul says it's a great mystery, right? But St. Paul also says, I wish all men to be like me. Right? Well, because for the sake of them not having worries, he continues. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Right? But, but not to belittle. 
You know, and, and we have to be careful. Like, let's say, let's mention a, a saint. Anyone, pick a saint. Anyone, throw me a saint. Anthony. For lack of a better expression. Moses. Anthony. Anthony. Saint Anthony. Anthony the Great. You had parents, right? You didn't come from Mars, right? There's a beautiful book upstairs. We've been saying this for almost 15 years now, but nobody's translated it. The mothers of the three hierarchs. St. John the Christian, St. Basil the Great, St. Gregory the Theologian. Those three huge, giant saints, they're mothers. The lives of those mothers, eh? Of course. Anyone, actually, the, the, the canons of the church say that if anyone says that marriage is lower than monasticism, for monasticism is lower than marriage, it's heresy. Can I, can I? Everyone has a specific calling, right? Now... We, sh we shouldn't belittle. There's an expression in Greek, let's see if I can translate it. Variai kaloriki, heavy is monasticism, right? To bear. Ala sikutos agamos, but what marriage you cannot lift. <laughs> the weight of marriage compared to the weight of monasticism. And what does it mean? Let me explain that. Yeah. Because, forgive me for one second, because in marriage, the scriptures say this, right? The one that is celibate. All he or she seeks is to please the Lord. The one that is married seeks to please her husband and wife. Right? And sometimes, that's not always what God wants. Right? So, what we should be saying within of this, within marriage, because it's a great blessing, and I mentioned that earlier tonight, that we find someone, we say the word soulmate. When we say soulmate, what we actually mean, and forgive me, we, we mean passion mate. Not soulmate, right? To suit our passions. That's not what marriage is about. If it is, it won't last. Soulmate means to help some, find someone that helped me with them to save ourselves together. The home is a small church. It's called the home church, Katiko Ecclesia, right? The home church is supposed to raise saints, and the first saint is supposed to be the father and the mother. If the mother and father are in saints, how are the kids if God grants? Eh? So, if we look at marriage this way, then we see how holy it is. But unfortunately, the majority of the marriages that we see today have not even, they're not even close to this. It's in a different world altogether. Right? Superficial. And what's scary, superficial, what's scary, and the saints say this, forgive me, Paul. One of the saints, I can't remember the name, forgive me, says that if the parents are snakes, then their kids will be poisonous snakes, and their kids' kids will be flying poisonous snakes. Oh, no. That's what we see today in front of us. That's why when we get married, holy life, to raise holy kids, to raise saints. Can I, can I share, Please. Uh, can I share something? Please do. About? Have you heard of Geron de Mesoyos? <clears throat> He's in Greece from Thessaloniki. Mm. Well, he told us, I heard one of his homilies the other day, and uh, he mentioned that uh, this uh, couple came to him and told, them, told him their story of their marriage. He said the woman was speaking, the husband was quiet. So the woman was speaking, saying, 20 years ago I used to go to my confessor and used to say, my husband, he comes home late. He's late to come home. Well, you got to bear with that, the elder told her. you got to bear with that. A few months down the road, she went back to the elder and said, But my husband, he, he, he comes home, and I saw in his shirt uh, lipstick stains, and he smelled like women's fragrances. I can't take this anymore. And he comes even more late. Please try to bear with it. The next time she went to the elder, she said, you know what, I pressured him, I pressured him, I pressured him, and he confessed to me that he was uh, unfaithful to me. I can't do this. I have to get a divorce. He said, you could divorce her, him. She, he said to her, you can divorce him if you want. You can absolutely divorce him if you want. But if you don't, you will be given a great crown. A crown for bearing with his weaknesses and he's like so what's it gonna be you're gonna go for the big crown or the lesser crown so why I'm mentioning this is because you say that some people are divided in marriage 
but some people in their marriage actually are serving God even more than outside of a marriage. She stayed next to him. After a couple of years, he overcame his weaknesses, and he became a very good husband. And there they were 20 years later together with a priest, saying that all of their kids prospered. They had five children. They prospered in every way in life. In every way. Not just, you know. So what's, what's the key in that, if I may say? Yeah. The key in that is they had guidance. Right. And so that's what we, early before you came, that's what I was hitting at. Is that in all things, we need guidance. <clears throat> Because to the average person's ears, to hear certain things, and they say, are you crazy? Give him the shoes, as we say in Greek. You know what I mean? She didn't give we them the need shoes. guidance. And they, were, they, they became very, very... He also healed away from his bad ways. And their kids became excellent people because they saw her mo their mother, what kind of a mother they had. So they learned how to be... How to be sacrificial and be... And what do the scriptures say, Paul? They say, bear one of his burdens and so doing you fulfill the will of God. Right? That's right. And it's hard. That's why I said, you know, monasticism is a hard weight to lift, but marriage is a bearable weight to it's lift. It's amazing. And that's why we need guidance. Yes. It's amazing what this woman testified about her husband after. Yeah. That he used to be the most, well, not the most, but a very tender, affectionate, very... Um, you know, consider it uh, family man, husband and father afterwards. Not right away. The transition took a yes. couple of years. Yeah. It took a couple of years, she said, before he started yeah. to change. Repentance is a big thing, right? And that's why we, are, we, we, we should give thanks to God, literally. But how exactly? That he, became, that he became man. That he was born for us. <laughs> that he was baptized for us. So that the kingdom of God is open to everyone of goodwill. Let's end with a brief prayer for you. Thank you for your time. For Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Christ, the true light, who dost enlighten and sanctify every man that cometh into the world, let the light of thy countenance be signed upon us, that in it we may behold the unapproachable light. And guide our steps into the performance of thy commandments by the intercessions of thine all immaculate mother of all the saints. Amen. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us, save us, I mean. Have a good night. Thank you for coming. Thank you.